Hi, this is Mary Keurig with Front Runners Innovate Magazine, and I have with me today Naftali Bryant. I hope I said that right, Naftali Bryant. Uh, yes, and Naftali's yes, out of Texas, and I found him um, through LinkedIn, but when we started having the conversation, I realized he approached education and learning with a whole different perspective from the standpoint of how you achieve that and then how you how you maximize what you've got going on with education in the first place really different perspective love what you're thinking love where you're going with all of this uh and i really wanted to bring that to the surface and have people um, learn from you um, how you've done it because this comes from experience and how you want to to share that journey with other students who may not realize that, um, especially during this pan pandemic, that there are ways, there are workarounds for getting that education that you really want from a higher education perspective. So, Naftali, I'm gonna shut up and let you tell me about your background first. Let's bring us from where you came from up to where we are now, okay? Okay, so I basically, uh, um, long story short, um, I did not graduate from high school on time. I actually failed an algebra two test my last course of my senior year in high school. So I went to summer school, I got married, got divorced, started <laughs> working on a military base and a retail, retail portion of it. I did that for almost 13 years. Right around 2010, I decided, let me go back to college because I, this is not necessarily a dead end job. I just don't, I just don't like it. So let me just try to go get some more skills. So. I started going to the, the local community college. Um, at first I started at St. Phillips, started receiving financial aid. And then I noticed that I could, financial aid was gonna pay for basically at the time, any class I would take. So at one point between 2013 and 2015, I went to five schools simultaneously, where literally I took a class at one campus. <laughs> There's five <laughs> campuses in the Alamo College District. Wow. And I took a class at each. And uh, financial aid paid for it. So I didn't pay for any of it. And then right around 2013, a well, 2012, I signed up for this uh, leadership institute called the Alamo College of Student Leadership Institute. It was like a student organization that teaches you principal-centered leadership. And one of my instructors signed me up for a business competition. She didn't tell me. They contacted <laughs> me and said, you owe us $45. And I said, who are you? Yeah. Let alone, why would I owe you $45? She, she uh, emailed me after that. She said, just go to the reception. Okay. I said, yes, ma'am, I'll go. So like 13 weeks later, the program was like 11 weeks out of 18 teams representing 23 countries. The team I was on and that they voted me to lead, we got third place. We were the only community college team in the entire competition. And then they wind up taking our business product, which was an online leadership institute and developed it into a study abroad. So I got to go to Asia for something I did in 2013. Wow. Um, and then in between that time, I started getting a lot of scholarships, uh, Haku and uh, different types of scholarships. And so student organizations would ask me, hey, can you come talk to the students about how to get scholarships? I was like, yeah, let's do it. So one day I'd gotten out of college, it was maybe 2017. And I was on LinkedIn and my tagline used to be, I help students get paid to go to college. And I didn't really have a service. It was literally, I was telling them, hey, you might want to go to a cheaper school. If you go to a cheaper school, get scholarships and financial aid, there's a good possibility you can get paid to go to school. A doctor in DC, um, she sent me an inbox. She said, well, how much do you charge for your service? And I was like, oh, uh, <laughs> I don't really charge because I don't have any service. You know, I was kind of shocked because nobody really asked me. And she was like, well, okay, I don't care write me invoice and I was like oh wow so I had to download like an invoice app and all that type of stuff to send her an invoice it was like 25 bucks and then from there in 2018 I was um, trying to go to this branding class and they gave me a scholarship for it mm -hmm. so I'm in the middle of this branding class and the, the the teacher was saying okay well I need to talk to you after this class I said okay let's do it she said I'm the student you're trying to reach I said what do you mean she said, I got my degree in, in biology because my parents told me that was the field you need to go into because it guarantees money after college. It was never my passion. So I have student debt and I have a degree. I don't use it. She said, what you're trying to do would help would have helped me. So because it would have helped me, I'm going to let you go through my branding program. I'm a, a pilot it with you. $5,000 program. So she built my website. She helped me with the colors. 
chill me with everything. So Spark Ed was started as just trying to help college students. It got branded because of a scholarship. And now soon I'm going to start to, um, what I say, force, force multiply, they say in the military. Uh, it's almost like when you throw a grenade, you may just have one bullet, but if you throw a grenade, it can get more of the Everywhere. enemy. Yeah. Um, and that's what I'm going to try to do as far as like online courses, um, just so kids can get the basis. They, there's so much students don't know mm -hmm. um, and their parents don't know just because it's not the best thing for a school to tell you all of it. They're not necessarily lying. They're mm -hmm. just not giving you all the information. And so that's the, the gap I want to kind of fill. Do you even do you even think that maybe guidance counselors at the high school level or even you know any kind of counseling uh, group at the the you know the community college or college level do you think they know all the stuff that you know all the, the ins and outs of different possibilities that you know I think they know I don't I think they know but it's not advantageous to them so in high school, K through 12, a lot of it is get out of high school, get you into college. So if that means we'll take you out of class to sign financial aid, that's what we'll do. It's really not, it's a numbers game. So the, the better the students do, the better they look. And then when you get in college, the more we can get you out of college is the better they look. Your real success about getting a degree and everything, that's great for the school. But the fastest way to get you in and out is our real... I hate to say it, it's our real mission. You know, we say students first, but it's students first as far as what we can get from you as a student. Mm -hmm. And I actually currently work at a college in the enrollment say. process. Yeah. So I, I kind of know it and I thought it before, but now that I'm in it and when COVID hit and the enrollment number started just getting pressed into us, then I realized, okay, this is really about getting butts in seats. It's not really about educating students. Not that the people that are doing it are bad. The system was created terribly and they've, had, they've got to work within this silo that, that we're all in. So in, in other words, the way to kind of break that, that uh, pattern or to, to break into that strategy is to kind of just prepare yourself, be armed with knowledge and know where you can go for what resources. So uh, I know you're still kind of looking around uh, for the next, you know, resource that you might need to either extend your education or, you know, kind of pull out the entrepreneurship thing here. I know there's fellowships that you're looking at, that sort of thing. Um, do you, you feel like you have a handle on that yet or is that, is that still developing as we speak? Oh, I have a, a pretty good handle on it. So the thing about education a lot of times is when you work in education, they kind of take the passion out because in academia, they measure you not by personality, not necessarily by your effectiveness, but by mm -hmm. your degree. So if you don't have a bachelor's or above, for some crazy reason, unless you're a celebrity, that they'll prostitute a degree for, because they'll give honorary degrees to people, which I don't understand, mm -hmm. then they're going to judge you by your, your, your uh, degree. So for me, having two associates, you would think from the schools I work at, <laughs> in the place that I work at and taking the, the name, brand name, you, you know, because when you're a student, you get scholarships, they pay you, but it's really PR. They're really saying, hey, we love these type of students. And so they'll put you in front of donors, put you in magazines and all that other type of stuff to try to garner more students like you. That's why when you look on um, different websites for the school, they say our students do this. It's never the, the bottom. It's never the medium. It's the very top two or three. That's why they only show two or three, right? And so uh, me already knowing it, I was like, okay, so a bunch of people have been telling me to get a bachelor's. Well, I have a bachelor's uh, amount of credits. I don't have the degree. But right now as we speak, if I go try to get my BA, business administration, there's four classes I could take at the community college level that will count to go to the university. The problem is, is if I take those four at the university, I miss a degree. If I take them at the community college, I'm only four credits away from getting a whole nother <laughs> degree mm -hmm. for free, because I'm not going to go unless I get financial aid and then transferring out. And there's transfer scholarships I can get because of the student organizations I was already in. So it's now literally, 
I'll probably be doing the, uh, the, there's a thing called Apply Texas, which is your normal, like, um, application you do for most of the colleges in, in Texas. And so I'll probably be doing that in the next two or three weeks. And then I may have to put in for a financial aid appeal, which is basically saying that they paid me too much financial aid before. But because I'm in good standing and graduated, now why should they give it to me? Which is, you know, that's just a simple uh, essay. So I'm going through that process now. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll figure out after that. But my whole thing is I'm in the education space now. I'm, every day that I'm in it, it's more experience that I'm getting. And I'm in the hub where I work is if you're a student at some point, you're coming to my office, either you're dropping off a transcript or you're picking up your cap and gown or you're getting our, your degree. That all comes from out of, out of our office. So for me to be in education, I came to the right spot at the right time. Mm -hmm. And so now it's literally, do I need the piece of paper or do I have a good mix of experience and paperwork to mm -hmm. where if you don't hire me for a higher position or something like that, then the fact that you hired me helps my brand. So students that don't know me or parents that don't know me and say, well, why should we? I can easily say, well, my alma mater hired me. Mm -hmm. That's why you should. So it's a good, I've got a good mix. It's just a matter of what's the smartest move to make right now. Well, talk to us about uh, Spark Ed and where you think you're going to take it. Tell us what, what, what is the vision? What is the, the mission involved in, in what you're doing there and where you think you might want to take it? The simple mission is to have students redefine college success. College success has been marketed that it's the degree and your diploma just proves that you pass tests. It doesn't do anything outside of that. All it means is that you pass previous tests. It doesn't mean you're disciplined. It doesn't mean that um, you can finish a goal because the truth of the matter is you could have cheated the entire time just to get the piece of paper because you thought the piece of paper was going to make you successful. So it's for students to learn what their their individual college success is. And for me, college success is what do you ultimately want to do in life? And now let's get you a credential to do it. Not necessarily the credential makes you successful. It just helps you become more successful. So that's part of the mission. Um, so that people can basically define their own life. Um, that's part of it. And then ultimately, um, coaching is part of it. But I know I can't make as much impact because I'm a limited resource. So that's where the eventual ebook will come in. That's where the courses will come in. That's where the speaking engagements will come in because I believe just in this time, this it's ripe for a disruption in education because a lot of people that are in it are just not brave enough to say, this has always been wrong. Now let's try something different. If we try it and it fails, we can always go back to the old stuff, yeah. but we're not brave enough to do it. So people like myself and others, who are not so entrenched in it that we can go in and back out. Um, we're ha we have to be the one that's disruptors. And the fact that I'm still quote unquote an employee and I still think like a student, I think helps uh, me be able to speak the language of students right now. And I think that if students don't change it, it's not gonna change. Um, the curriculum is not gonna change. They're just gonna rehash the same old stuff and we'll wind up with uh, a friend of mine, Carl, calls the degree economy. We have a bunch of people with degrees, but they don't boost the economy. Wow, that's, that's interestingly put. I like that. Let me ask you this. Um, with the pandemic being on everybody's shoulders right now, and we're not quite mm -hmm. to the point where we're out of that yet, um, do you think that's mm -hmm. impacting some of the scenarios that you're talking about that, that students are not, you know, a, able to get the education they want because sometimes they can't pay for it or they can't get those student loans that uh, are going to take them forever to pay off. I think my son is near right around 40 now and I think he's just paying off some of his. Um, but there's the financial aspect and there's also just how confusing and how hard it is to find the right classes now that so much of it is online and they could only take so many you know, people and that kind of thing. Um, do you think that the timing for you is, is right now because of that, or how is that impacting you in any way, personally and as, uh, as, as a business person? Well, personally, it's not too bad because um, I adjusted well. So like me working remote most of the time, I was an online student. So because I was an online student and could kind of was used to, you know, sitting at a computer and learning, it wasn't that big of a deal. It was just literally getting remote desktop access, stuff like that technical stuff. 
as far as students are concerned, there's two big things that I think are going to um, impact students because I think it's two of the greatest things we don't talk about in education, but it's the most impactful. And that is internships and that's studying abroad. Hmm. When you go get your degree <laughs> and you walk the stage, you walk the stage under a couple of people that got that degree. So you, you've thought this whole time that you separated yourself and you just switched boxes. You switched the box from having a, a high school diploma to now having a college diploma, but you're still in a different box. You haven't differentiated yourself. When you study abroad and when you intern, those are two of the greatest aspects of education. And now that they're taken because you have to do a virtual internship or you can't literally go study abroad. When I went to Asia, I realized um, how much how much our education does not tell the truth about stuff because it's propaganda in our education. Mm -hmm. So we'll sell certain stuff about history and change it. But when you go to another country and they don't have the same propaganda, you get both sides of the coin. And then when you learn that there's different cultures and how you can be culturally competent, it's, it's one thing to be culturally competent in an office when there's mixed races. It's totally different when you leave the US and you go to something that doesn't even speak English, like China. Mm -hmm. Two different governments, two different mindsets. How then can you be a global leader if all you know is the US or if all you know is China? Mm -hmm. So to get that, and then if you wanna work for somebody like a Google or an Amazon or, or a Dell, and they're looking for global leaders, it's hard to sell yourself as that leader if you haven't seen the globe, if you don't have a passport. And so those two things are things I'm kind of researching now because it's one of the things I tell students is step three. I tell students, once we've realized what you want to do with your life and once we've kind of picked out, picked out a degree and the school you want to go to that's best for your money, now what do you actually do when you're on campus? If you're just going to class, you failed. You got a degree, but you failed because your opportunities are never on that piece of paper. They're in a the person. When you go get, um, go for a job, your resume speaks to a computer, but if the two people, the person that's hiring and you don't get along and they don't like you, it doesn't matter what's on your resume, you don't get hired. Yeah. And so when you, if you can learn that in the hallway in your education space, then that's one of the things most people don't, don't hone into. And when you go to bigger schools like Yale, I, uh, uh, the Alamo College sent us to Yale in 2014, and I was networking with a guy before I got there. He told me something that changed my life. He said that you don't come to Yale because it's Yale. You would think you would, but that's not where you come. You come to Yale because of who's going to Yale and who went. Because the human capital that's at Yale, that's why you go. But most students, especially if you're like a first generation, your whole family, your whole neighborhood is just telling you go to college. They don't tell you what to do when you get there. They don't tell you who to talk to. So you're basically just pushed into some place and then you're sitting there stuck. You can't go back home and tell them because they don't know they've never been to college. And the people you're trying to talk to, there's so many college students there that if you don't find an instructor or a mentor or something like that, you just become a number. And so one of the things I'm trying to teach students is before you become a number, here's what you need to look for. Here's what type of teacher you need to look for. Here's what type of mentor you need to look for because it's those people that are gonna give you the opportunities. The only reason why I'm sitting here now is not because I went to college. It's because of the people that I met while I was in college. So I'm trying to teach students how to do the same thing. Perfectly put. Uh, I love that. Uh, and I think it's, it's an amazing um, journey that you're on. And I think there's, there's more to come for sure. I look forward to seeing what you're going to do with Spark mm -hmm. Ed. I think we all are. And I think, you know, ha let me ask you this. What, what is the age group that you most like to work with? Are you working with parents or are you working with the students themselves? And if it's a student, what is the ideal? I, I want to work with both because what I've, what I've been finding out is I, at first I thought my target audience was just single mothers because that's just the people I knew who had students that were getting ready to go. But I started realizing it wasn't just the student. The mother started thinking, wait a minute, hmm, I didn't finish school because of whatever. I need this information. Or the father may say, hmm, I need this information. So normally it's between like 16 and 21. And then I'm starting to get like, from like 25 to like 45. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of weird. It depends on what they're going for. Many of the students that are coming back that are older or not traditional, they're yeah. looking for a credential because that credential can get them a raise. They're not really looking for a degree. They're looking mm -hmm. for like a certificate 
and they didn't know you can go to school for like one semester and get a certificate. They didn't know that. But because I knew it, I could say, oh, yeah, this is where you need to look. You look here, you look there, and it won't take you that much time. It's not going to take much time out of your schedule. And if you go online, you could sell it to your boss that it's not going to take away from work. So just little, little stuff like that, you'd be surprised how much people want to do and how much they don't know because it's on the school website, but a lot of times it's not front facing. It's buried behind tabs and they don't know which tab to go look for. Yeah. Well, if you didn't know that it existed, you're not, probably not going to trip across that information. Um, that's what makes you so mm -hmm. valuable. Um, I like the fact that you would work with, with all, and I can see a lot of parents going, oh my God, I need you like yesterday. Um, in the same edition of the magazine, I think I told you that uh, I did an interview with two of my, my favorite young people. One of them is my own mentee who is 17. She's, she's a junior in high school and her aim is for medical, uh, a career mm -hmm. medicine. And uh, the other one is in her second year at a college and finds it very challenging that it's, it's hard to kind of maneuver around during the pandemic. Some classes are in, you know, are held in on a property and then others are online um, trying to adhere to all the different rules and regulations and then and then not being able to socialize. Like you say, there's so much of the, the life skills or the soft skills that you get when you can socialize um, being kind of dampening things. And this is a gal on the leadership track. Both of them actually are on leadership paths. Um, and the one in college is on an entrepreneurship and purposefully so, she's really mm -hmm. smart about that. But finding it a little frustrating when she needs extra help with accounting and can't get a teacher to answer her instead of in front of everybody, you know, <laughs> in, a, right. in a virtual situation, right. can't get her own little ear, you know. Um, so in, in find, having to find a lot of this information on her own and ba basically construct her own education um, schedule and everything yeah. uh, that way. So uh, what mm -hmm. I'd love to do, and I'll have to ask the girls if they wanna do this, is to hop on a call with you and just, do like record a little <laughs> just record a little oh, yeah. session with you i think that would be awesome yeah, i would love that too. that i think that would be awesome but um yeah very good well, we're doing I, that in I, right I would now, the, the thing about our our uh, the thing about our school is like that the things that are happening with colleges right now i can tell you is being on campus is that especially like somewhere in texas we're in a hot spot so we're going literally from week to week you know, mm -hmm. we'll get an email like on the Sunday and saying basically we can go because if if yeah. we get a flare up, the last thing a college wants is a flare up on their campus mm -hmm. because it just, you know, it, it makes them look so it makes us look selfish that, you know, really, we really don't care about your health. We need you in the seat. And yeah. so it's a weekly thing. So I would just encourage all the college students, the people that uh, they're not avoiding you, they're not trying to be mean. It's just literally. Mm -hmm. There's so much legal stuff in college, you know, that yeah. unfortunately they've got a, they've got a government to answer to, especially if it's a public college. Yeah. So just kind of be patient. Um, use LinkedIn to network with people at your school so that you don't have to go through the normal channels. If you've got a LinkedIn page, this is the time to use it, mm -hmm. um, polish it up and connect with as many people as you can at your school so that if you have a question, you can inbox them instead of having to be one of their 2000 emails. Yeah. Trust me, it works. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Both of these gals do have uh, LinkedIn pages. So, uh, and I know one of them is really proficient at using hers for, she's got a little podcast. And so she's developed quite a little influencer mm -hmm. uh, label herself. So really good. I think that could be a fun thing to do. We'll see if we can't work that out. Yes, well, I would love is, to. Yeah, I think you'd be up for that. I think this is great. Well, this is terrific. And I wish you the best in moving forward with all of this. And as soon as you get your program together, let us know. And uh, we'll certainly be able to you know, get that information out to everybody and see what we can do. I think down the road, we're going to have to talk to you about how global you might be able to get with something like this, because a lot of it sounds like it's, it's based on knowledge you've got here in the United States. But um, mm -hmm. I can see a lot of the information being generalized to, you know, to other populations elsewhere. Um, you right, know, not right. everybody does things the same way we do here in the States, but uh, there's some things that have to be sim similar and yes. being able to direct, you know, students and parents to particular resources that might be available inside their own country that they might not even be aware right. uh, that they could look for to be important. Right. So anyway, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And thank you. And we look forward to kind of. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. Yes. Thank you.